So I'm going to read for you guys something that I wrote about my dad when I was a, when I was a kid. And uh, it was during family home evening, and I had to write, write all about him. So I'm going to read to you guys what I wrote that night. It says, this person is very special. He's such a fine example for others to follow. He loves to serve the Lord and would give his last dollar to help a friend in need. He is a kind, gentle manner and wouldn't hurt a fly. Can you believe he was an amateur boxer in his younger days? He was also a star rugby player and uh, he told us that in high school he once scored the winning point in the last second of the game. And he also told us how proud his dad was of him that day. But more so, uh, his father was proud of the fact that his son grew up to be a righteous, hardworking man who saw the importance of God, family, and service in his life. I'm really proud of this man too, because he's my dad, and I love him a lot. This was the house in Fort Wayne where we lived. This was my grandpa Lolo, but I was too young to remember him. Eleanor May Brown Mataele, my kind and beautiful grandmother, who lived to the age of 90. But first and foremost, it was great grandpa Seosaya Mataele, born in 1879, who was the greatest influence on my grandpa Lolo and my father. Great-grandpa was the patriarch of the Mataele family who spearheaded the growth of the Mormon faith in Fo'ui. He had invited the Mormon missionaries who were on another island called Baba to sail back to Tonga and to introduce the gospel in Fo'ui and start a school for his children. parents served as labor missionaries in um, New Zealand and um, I remember uh, a lot of times where my dad uh, had to catch a ride to the pier to the wharf I'm not sure where it was but we lived in Hamilton and I, I'm sure the pier or the wharf was miles away but I remember him telling us later that he had to hitchhike basically find a ride to the wharf to pick up a, a, a package or a box from his father. His father would send him togonaki in a box, you know, yams, ufi, whatever it was, kumala. Uh, his father would provide for him, you know, even being married with kids. You know, his father really loved him and, and appreciated his work, his, his missionary work. And his dad still provided for him. My grandfather loved him. Uh, probably because he was the youngest, but I'm sure it's because because he served he served his uh, a labor missionary in New Zealand. And you've borne your solemn witness that the gospel was restored. You were called that you might testify and teach your fellow man the simple truths of Jesus in an unfamiliar land. Yes, each child of God has promises to keep, for the Savior has said, if ye love me, feed my sheep. It was very important to our father that his children develop a close relationship with each other. My dad loves his siblings. My dad loves especially his sister, our Auntie Kala. She means a lot to him, and my dad has instilled it in our hearts to never forget what our Auntie Kala has done for him and for me. And and, and I can tell you we're in America today because of our Auntie Kahalo. My dad loves her. My dad loves her with all his heart. He would do anything for his sister. And that's really what he's instilled in us. He wants us to develop the same kind of love that he has for his siblings and us as, as brothers and sisters and 
first cousins. We, we never consider anybody cousins. We don't have a word for cousins in our language. So we grew up just thinking that Aaron is our brother, Motopuaka is our brother, Emma is our sister. We feel that like we come from the same mother, same father. And that's really what um, what our dad wanted us to, to be like, to just love and to keep the, the bonds of family, the siblings, brother and sister within us and, and remember that. Uh, dad was in the bishopric uh, when I was still inactive in church. I remember when me and him used to have our little drives, uh, used to drive me to work or to the job site. He would always talk to me and he would always cry. He would always tell me I would never find happiness. The lifestyle I was in, and especially if I didn't go back to church, find the Lord. Talking with Dad, thinking about what he used to tell me in our little talks. So I gradually uh, started going back to church. Soon got back together, got my family sealed. Blessings started pouring in. I knew someday the Lord would call him to be a bishop. So growing up, we had missionary meal, and that was a big part of my childhood and my teenage life. And I'm so grateful for that. I know that the love for missionaries and missionary meals has been planted in my heart. And to bring that spirit into our home that I felt all my life growing up, it was such a cool experience to meet so many missionaries and to develop these relationships with them, especially with my parents and the missionary couples who came through. I'm, my parents had have so many friendships because of that. We also had missionary meals during the holidays for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and those were even more of an ordeal. Dad would always have a pig at each of those dinners, and I swear, the missionaries would get a kick out of the apple in the pig's mouth and seeing it laying out on the table on top of all the food that was prepared for them. For my parents, it was something that they truly willingly wanted to do for the Lord was to have these missionaries come through and have these sweet spirits bring joy into our home. I'm sure they wanted their children to see their examples. I know my dad wanted us to love the missionaries like his grandpa Siosaya and his dad, Lolo. And I can testify that that seed has been planted in my heart. Uh, I am so grateful for, for the example that my parents have, for the love that they have for missionaries. I truly can say that almost everything in my life that has to do with this gospel has been planted because of my parents' example. As I think of temples, my thoughts are the many blessings we receive therein. As we enter through the doors of the temple, we leave behind us the distractions and confusion of the world. Inside this sacred sanctuary, we find beauty and order. There's rest for our souls and respite from the cares of our lives. As we attend the temple, there can come to us a dimension of spirituality and a feeling of peace, which will transcend any other feeling which could come into the human heart. We will grasp the true meaning of the words of the Savior when he said, Peace I leave with you, 
My peace I give unto you. Not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Such peace can permeate any heart. When I moved back to Hawaii in 2006, I was assigned to home teach the foster family. And I would go over and diligently visit them, and they were going through ups and downs of life, as you know. And, and uh, there was a time when they were just so desperate for help. And, and I went to them and I said, well, who do you trust? Who, 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 can, who can go up to bat for you? There's only one person we trust, and that's Bishop Mataele. And so I called Bishop Mataele, and you came over, and you gave him a blessing. And I think you gave all of them blessings. I was serving as a state executive secretary when Kawasi was called as a bishop. And I remember when uh, after President Wally interviewed him and he accepted the calling to serve as bishop, he asked for counselors and it took a, a week or two before uh, he was ready. And uh, President Wally was leaving on a trip and he said, Brother Wong, I need you to call Brother Mataele and, and I need to have his counselors before I leave. So it was a Wednesday evening and we had meetings that night and I called Brother Mataele and I said, Brother Mataele, this is Brother Wong. President Wally needs to have your counselors tonight if possible. He said, could I come down and talk to President Wong? And I said, certainly, we're here in meetings and uh, we'll just speak up any time. So about a half an hour later, he came into the, to the estate office and knocked on the door. And as he uh, came in, sat down, President Wally asked him, uh, Brother Mataele, who would you like to serve uh, as your counselor? And I was taking notes and was kind of looking down. And uh, I heard him say, I'd like to have Jim serve as my first counselor. And in my mind, I was thinking, who's Jim? And I looked up and looked at Brother Mataele, and he had his finger, and he was pointing at me, and he was saying, him. And I looked at Brother Wall, at President Wall, and then he said, President Wall, said, would you like to have as your second counselor? He said, Brother Wilson. And at that moment, President Wally thought for a moment and said, okay. And I thought, oh, I'm out of a job. Uh, for the next five and a half years, I had the privilege of serving with uh, Bishop Mataele as his counselor. And it has changed my life. I am so grateful for the blessing it was for me to serve with him and to come to know him better. Uh, I've told him on several occasions how much I love him and how much I appreciated his guidance, but most, most importantly, his example. He was like a father to me, and I, uh, I've grown to love him so much. Over those years, I saw him serve, and I saw him love so many people, and I have learned so much from him and from his, his perfect example. He is so Christ-like in the way that he treats people and the way that he approaches things. He has been an example to me. He has blessed my family. He has blessed me in so many ways. And on his 80th birthday, Bishop, if I should wish you a, a happy birthday and express the, our love and gratitude from our family, but also to you and to your family. For all that you do, and for the wonderful individual and example that you are, we love you. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful son. You have seen the field is white, you have shared the gospel light. May the Lord bless you with many, many, many more. Happy birthday, Debbie. Well done.